Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. I'm alone today. I don't like that. Nikki had an accident. She is going to be just fine, but she is recuperating right now. She has a broken vertebrae in her neck. She has a broken ankle, but she's doing just fine and she's going to be back very shortly. I want to thank everybody for their kind words on social media and thanks for the prayers. We certainly appreciate them. Keep them coming because she is on the road to recovery and we need to keep her safe and sound. You know, last week we were out there in the smoker and we were talking about bacon. I did my own bacon, look at that. You see that, that's a familiar sight right there. Now that, I processed myself. I know what's in it and it's not gonna be around for a long time. We're gonna eat this rather quickly. Last time you saw it, there was half again that much there. Now tonight we're in search for the perfect BLT. In fact, we're looking for a KY BLT and maybe put a C on the end of that for cheese. But first, I was inspired to think about different kinds of things you can do yourself and that's, I'm always looking, always thinking, and I love bologna, but I don't like all the ingredients. Look at some of the ingredients and the preservatives in bologna and you think, wow, no wonder it's dated to stay in the refrigerator for 17 months. We're gonna make bologna tonight. Now it's not gonna look exactly like bologna, but it's gonna taste like it. We're gonna know where it came from. We're gonna know what's in it. And it's absolutely delicious. And you can slice it as thick as you want. Now I experimented around, got the ingredients that I like. I got the spices that I like. Now most of these are stuff you'll have in your cabinets. Some of them you might have to go out and buy, but you can find all of these. They're readily available. We're gonna also use dried milk. One cup of dried milk. We're gonna use ice. Now, a lot of times if you make sausage, you know you have to use ice in that to, to get that the right temperature and consistency for the meat. We're gonna use beef and pork, and this is 80% beef. Now, the pork has the fat in it, so we're gonna go that route. Now, I'm gonna need three pounds of beef and about two pounds of pork. Now, if Nikki was here helping me, we'd be mashing up in our hands and using potato mashers and all that. I'm gonna use the old KitchenAid here, and this is just about gonna fill this cat up and it's really gonna mash everything up and get the flavors involved. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our meat, put it in this container. I've got a bread hook on here, and I experimented around until I get, get something that worked in here. I've measured all my spices and sugars out. Let me tell you exactly what you're gonna need, amounts. You're gonna need two teaspoons of sugar, two and a half tablespoons of salt, one tablespoon of white pepper, one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder, one and a half teaspoon of cardamom, one and a half teaspoon of coriander, one teaspoon of sage, three fourths a teaspoon of mace, allspice, and black pepper. Now don't forget we have dry milk, one cup of that here. And as we mix this up, we're gonna put the meat in there first, then we're gonna add a little bit of ice here and there, and then we're gonna add the flavors and just mix that up and mix that up and mix it up. You ready to get started on our homemade bologna? Let me get some ice. Now, I'm gonna go about three pounds of beef and about two pounds of pork, ground pork. All right, here we go. We're gonna get this started. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of ice. I'm gonna work that with a spoon. Go ahead and put my dry milk in there. Spread that around. We're gonna start getting that consistency. Now we're gonna keep adding little by little as we go along. This milk kinda of acts as a binding agent, I think. Keep adding a little bit of ice here and there. A little moisture. Keeps everything firmed up. Now I tried this several different ways. And I actually took some, now I like smoked bologna, so I took one and smoked it, and it was absolutely wonderful. So you can do smoked bologna. But you've seen our smoke rolling outside. It's a beautiful thing. Now you can see right now, we're starting to get a little change of consistency there. With the moisture and the dry milk, it's starting to bind together. At this point, I'm gonna come back and start putting my spices in. Mix through it evenly. Around evenly. Never managed to get it in there. 
keep on with the spices. It's starting to smell like bologna. Now in just a little while, you saw very recently, we had somebody over and we talked about medicinal plants. Jennifer told us a lot that day, but we have a lot more. So we're gonna have part two of medicinal plants that you can find around just about anywhere. Now see what I'm saying? It's trying to crawl out of there. God, we're almost there. Now the consistency is kind of what you would probably expect it to be. Binds together very well. All right, we have our meat, which is bound together now very well. We're gonna pull this out. All right, we've got that out. I'm gonna set this out of the way. I've got my oven preheating on 275. Now I'm gonna jam that in here into this pan. I'm gonna shape it. So now obviously it's not gonna be the perfect round of bologna like you would see in the store, but it will rise and it will round at the top. We're gonna to put that in the oven as soon as we're preheated, 275. And that's gonna take that about three hours to get that temperature around 155, 160 for the internal temperature. So have you a meat thermometer, always. Now the interesting thing about this is the texture. The texture is like salami. So I'm gonna put that in here, shape it up. Now it's gonna look like a meatloaf. But again, the consistency is nothing like that. And remember, we're gonna make sandwiches out of this. So you want the end to where it stands up to where you can slice that. So you can make that kind of square on the end. It's gonna be bologna. As soon as I wipe my hand off, I'm gonna stick that in the oven. Let's watch the clock tick magically ahead. All right, now look what we got. This is a little salami roll I made the other day, but look at the texture of that. And I'm telling you, it's beautiful. Look how that looks when it's cut. Just like lunch meat. Now I'm gonna cut this bologna. It hasn't chilled. Normally I would chill this. I want you to see what it looks like. Oh, it smells heavenly. Now this is obviously a big thick slice, but that's the way I would put it on a sandwich. Turn this around and let you take a look at this. Is that not wonderful? <laughs> it's bologna. But man, oh man, if you like bologna, you wanna know where everything came from, give this a shot. It's a beautiful thing. A little while ago we showed you our bacon that we fixed. A little while later, we're gonna show you how to make the perfect BLT. We search for all Kentucky ingredients. But first, let's talk about medicinal plants that you can find just about anywhere on the side of the road in your yard. Here's Jennifer to tell us more. I'm almost full of bologna. 